tonight's dinner is an absolute cupboard classic um, you can zhuzh it up as much as you like and you can make it as simple as you like and it always tends to be delicious it's um, chicken coconut curry so it's a mild curry so if you've got maybe fussy people in the house children who don't like spice this one works really really well for them everyone tends to love like the mild creamy curry um, it's relatively like really healthy because we're using coconut cream and coconut milk um, and it's such a cupboard essential. You're going to need some chicken. I always get the specially selected boneless skinless thighs. And um, if I get on the bone thighs, I just get like the normal ones. I only ever really get chicken thighs. I never like bother with chicken breasts or anything because chicken thighs are more affordable and they are better, they taste better. Um, tomato puree or chunky chopped tomatoes depending on how like saucy you want this dish. I think today I'm gonna go with the tomato puree. Um, coconut milk, I always get rich and creamy in the full fat one because whole fats are good for you and your body does need whole fats. Um, curry powder medium. I've got some fresh ginger which we actually always have in the uh, fridge anyway so um, but that is optional you can use like powdered ginger or you can just leave it out because the curry powder does have enough flavor fresh garlic and um, onion so and then you're gonna need like a side of your choice so I'm gonna go with rice I'm gonna mix some coriander with it I might add like an extra smidgen of turmeric into it just to give it a bit more yumminess uh, you could add some carrots into this, you could add some mushrooms into this. I love adding mushrooms into curry, it's very controversial. Lawrence does not like mushrooms in curry. I do. Um, so it's very controversial in our house about that. So the first thing I'm going to do is prep the onions. I'm going to use two small onions. I would use like one large, but we don't have one large. Um, so I'm going to prep the onions. Um, I'm just going to grate some ginger straight into there. I'm going to prep the garlic. I'm going to throw the chicken straight into this. You can brown um, the onions if you want and brown the chicken. I don't. The point of this recipe is it all gets chucked in and you get to like forget about it for a few hours. I'm going to be cooking mine on high for two and a half, three hours. Um, so yeah, nice and easy. And it's such a like, <gasps> we have nothing in slash, oh, we could easily make a chicken coconut curry. Um, again, really good if you've got fussy eaters. No one's really a fussy eater in my house. I mean, Orin has just had spicy rice for lunch, which is rice, peas, um, different spices, sriracha sauce. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> he is not a fussy eater, but then he does go through fussy days. Like the last week, he just like was refusing to eat anything that was like wet in texture. Like anything that touched his hand that was wet in texture, he was just not eating. And I'm trying to like ride it out because I know it's just a phase. Um, but yeah, then today he's just eating like this really saucy, sticky rice, he was shoving it in his mouth, so I think he was just in a tired mood last, um, the other day when he was a bit fussy. Um, and I've got recipes sometimes I just go to when he's going through a fussy phase, um, because sometimes you just, you want them to eat, and you fancy something and they might not fancy it that night but you fancy it so you tend to make them something different or you eat what you want to eat and I just feel like sometimes you've got to do what you've got to do to keep everyone happy. If I know he's going to sit down and eat a big bowl of tuna pasta and he's not going to eat this like spag bowl that I've just worked like hours over then I'm going to make the tuna pasta because I want him to eat. <laughs> anyway he's, he's a good eater. Um, anyway, uh, so I've chopped my onions. I just, they're gonna go really soft, so I just put those in chunks. I'm gonna put a load of garlic in there. This garlic does need using. It's starting to do that horrible, like, wilting dry thing. Um, so I'm just gonna put a load of garlic in there today. Garlic's good for you. So to easily, like, get the garlic out of its skin, hold the garlic on the table. Get a really fat knife. Be very careful when you're doing this bang it down um, so you've slightly crushed it and then you can just pull the skin off and it's so easy I mean this one's being a little bit of a pain but it's there we go it's so easy oh that's because it was too and look now with no chopping and stuff and you just get less smell on your hands you do still get 
somewhat of a smell, but you get less smell. And then I'm just going to crush it straight into the slow cooker. Um, so garlic, onion, I'm going to put some ginger in there as well. The chicken, tomato puree, um, a tablespoon of curry powder. Obviously later on when everything's cooked, I can taste it and if I want more, I can add some more and leave it for longer. Um, and coconut milk. The coconut milk, I'm going to add an hour before serving because I really don't want it to separate because I've got it on high at the moment. If you're having it on low, I would say cook low for like four to six hours and then you can add the coconut milk straight away. Because I've got it on high, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to add the coconut milk an hour before serving when I've turned it down. Um, but yeah, let's get everything in the slow cooker. <laughs> Forgot the word for it then. We've been on a very windy walk, so I've got windswept hair. I think I always have windswept hair. Um, so it's about an hour before I'm going to serve dinner, so I'm going to open the coconut milk. Um, I know some people have never cooked with coconut milk. It's a very good alternative to using cream. Um, it's good for you, it's got lots of nutrients in it. It does separate quite easily, so what you want to do is like not put it into a piping hot pan or something. And what you want to do is put it in and stir it as quickly as you can and keep stirring for a while. So I'm going to put this in, give it a really good stir, close the lid. I have turned the slow cooker down to low. This is what it would look like when you open it. The reason I'm showing you is because some people have never cooked with it and they might think that that's odd or that's a strange looking thing. Um, so look, it's literally like mousse or something um, and there is some liquid at the bottom as well but it's very thick. <clears throat> I've only used um, curry powder for this spoon so um, yeah so pop the whole can into here and start making it nice and creamy. <clears throat> I've got a frog in my throat. By the way, you can still add the um, tinned tomatoes if you want. I'm actually tempted, just because it's looking a little bit small, the curry, and this has got to feed three of us. Um, I'm kind of tempted to add the tomato. Ah, hello! I'm kind of tempted to add the tinned tomatoes. If you do that, you probably want to just reduce it a little bit on the stovetop. And then also, just a quick note to let you know. Hey, baby. Hey. Yeah, mummy's got the curry stuff out. The rice is in the microwave and what we're... So the rice is already in the microwave. Rice is super duper simple. I've made it in a few videos before. Small cup from the cupboard. Fill that, this makes like two adult portions. Fill that cup with rice. Put it into a large jug that's microwavable. Two cups of that same cup, two cups of just normal water into that jug with the rice. Um, a sprinkle of salt, a bit of cumin powder if you want. Cover the jug with a microwavable plate just so it doesn't spill over. Make sure there's a little bit of air just going in and out. Um, and microwave for exactly 20 minutes. It's so easy. And um, yeah, just a really easy way to cook rice. So the rice is in the microwave, that'll be ready soon. And then I'll just dump it all together in a plate. Yummy. delicious easy curry using minimal ingredients it's so super easy and delicious it's nice and um, cool as well I've found some naan bread in the freezer that needed eating so that's our last naan bread and um, the other half is still toasting but um, I've just added broccoli and carrots to the side of orange but I have got broccoli and carrots for Lawrence and I as well um, but yeah delicious I always add coriander I love the flavor of coriander on rice um, but a delicious meal ready for us. 
Okay, this recipe is definitely one of uh, my favorites to make. It's an every week kind of recipe. It's using up leftover veg in the fridge. It's using up any meats that are left over. It's definitely like a really cheap, delicious, lots of veggies type dinner. It can be a really, 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 really budget meal. And everyone tends to love it. So um, I do this dish probably once a week. And if I've had like, say we've had a Sunday roast, it often becomes the sort of like dish that I will make with leftover meat um, and leftover veggies. But this week I'm just making it with some chicken thighs that I had in the freezer, onions, rice, some herbs and spices. I have everything up on the screen. This is a baked chicken and rice dish. Now you can um, make this in a saucepan, you can make this in separate saucepans. I really think investing in one of these um, cast iron pans is genuinely worth its weight in gold. It is absolutely, like I can't live without this. I cannot live without this. It's a wide shallow dish. It can go in and out of the oven. It's an Aldi, what is that on my hand? It's an Aldi dupe of the Le Creusier um, dishes. I believe it's 20 inches or 20 centimeters. I don't know. I'm gonna have to like put the measurements up. Aldi sell them probably once a year when they do their sort of like um, dupes of Le Creusier. It was 20 pounds, the best 20 pounds I've ever spent. I use this daily, it's so handy. And it's really good for dishes like this because you can literally make it all in one dish. Normally I make the rice in the microwave, but this type of dish I love to just throw together and just throw in the oven. And then, hey presto, after an hour, you can get it out of the oven and it's done. So it's a great chuck it all in type dish, especially if you don't have a slow cooker and you still want to like brown the meats and things like that. So yeah, I'm gonna link some ones I find online and I'm gonna get as many budget friendly ones. Uh, I, I genuinely really recommend a shallow dish like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is make the marinade for the chicken. This recipe definitely is dictated by what is left over in your fridge. So I've got chicken. This chicken needs eating. So this is what we're having, chicken thighs with the bone and with the skin. Um, I've got onions. Onions tend to always put it in this dish, always goes well. And then like things I would always add is oregano, cayenne pepper, because I like a little bit of heat, paprika, celery salt. You can also add um, a tiny bit of sugar just to sweeten up um, all the herbs. Um, I've got peppers sitting in my fridge that need eating, so I'm just adding in peppers this week. Just adding it in, why not? I tend to find like root vegetables work best with this dish. If you've got kind of like broccoli, it goes a bit soggy in this kind of dish, so I wouldn't add it. But and I've got some rice. So let's essentially get the marinade ready first. So move this aside. Okay, so olive oil, I always use olive oil to be honest. Nice healthy dose of olive oil. Um, I'm gonna add all of the spices. So about a teaspoon of celery salt, actually a bit less than that to be honest. So some celery salt, about a teaspoon of oregano. Paprika, I love paprika. Um, you can use sweet paprika, I'm just using normal, but um, I'm probably gonna add a tiny bit of brown sugar into this recipe, just so um, like the sweetness brings out the savory flavor. Um, and a little bit of cayenne pepper, about half a teaspoon. I'm gonna add a tiny bit more paprika. Um, and then what I tend to do, is I always have like half a lemon just sitting in the fridge doing nothing. I tend to um, add some lemon juice as well. So stir all of that together. And what's great about this dish is everything that's gonna go in here and then go in the oven. The first thing I do want to do is brown the chicken. Um, and I can do that straight away in here. So I'm going to marinate the chicken, put it in here skin side down put it on the hob for a while, let it brown. Just a little bit of browning involved, but I like to brown um, chicken with skin on. So make up your marinade. You want to marinate your chicken for around an hour before cooking at least. I mean, if you could do this the night before, go you. I was just really rushing that day. And obviously because I'm a princess, I got my husband to <laughs> push the marinade in all the chicken properly. It is best doing it with your hands. 
but whilst that's marinating I can prepare my veg so just finely chopping my white onions, my peppers, the garlic, just getting all those bits ready. I did actually add a little bit of extra marinade onto the chicken. Um, I just made up a tiny bit more marinade and crushed the garlic in there because I forgot to do that before. Um, but yeah, it's always good to crush your garlic in the marinade and then marinate it all together for a while. Okay, so um, the chicken has actually been marinating for about an hour now. I added just a little bit extra of the marinade, um, so olive oil, the paprika, cayenne, pe no not cayenne pepper, the paprika and oregano and olive oil with the crushed garlic. Um, so now I'm going to fry the chicken for a while, skin down, just probably about five minutes, just so it gets like a nice crispiness and it sort of soaks the fat out. You don't want to cook chicken and rice together when there's too much fat um, because the rice will go a bit, a little bit gloopy. Um, so once that's fried for about five minutes, I'll add the onion and peppers and then fry that for another couple of minutes, take it all out, add the rice and the stock, put all the chicken and veggies back in and um, cook. I'm also going to grate, peel and grate some carrots as well um, to add into the rice. Okay, browning the chicken really is just what it is. You don't need to properly cook the chicken at this stage, just brown the skin. Um, it locks in moisture as well, which is great. So whilst that's browning, I'm going to prepare the stock water and the rice. I just put this all in one jar jug because it's just easy. So the rice, the hot water, the stock cubes give that a really, really good stir so the stock cubes have broken up. And then um, to make it my fragrant veggie rice, I add my um, grated carrot and mushrooms, which you're going to see in a short while. Also, a nice tip about using leftovers and using up everything you've got is mushroom stalks. Mushroom stalks get sort of thrown away all the time. Um, I tend to always keep them on the mushroom. Is it in focus? I tend to always keep them on the mushroom and cook with it. Or if I'm removing the stock, the stalk, I will chop these up into tiny pieces and I'm going to add them into my rice stock. Um, my rice is just sitting there in its stock, which I'm going to pour in the pan after all the browning is done. But I'm going to chop these up into tiny, tiny pieces and add it into my rice stock now. It gives the stock a really nice, like, a savoury edamame, edamame? Um, umami flavour. It's absolutely delicious. Again, it's using up leftover things that you would normally throw out, but you're getting, like, a good amount of flavour from them. So I recommend keeping your mushroom stalks and using them. So once the chicken has been browning, you want to remove the chicken from the pot. Just let the onions and peppers do the rest of their browning just for a couple more minutes. And then you want to add in the stock and the rice. So you want to make sure this is evenly spread out throughout the pan and all the rice is sitting underneath any moisture. So put it all in your pan, even it out, make sure the moisture is completely covering the rice. And then on top of that, you just want to lay your chicken out carefully and make sure um, it's skin side up in the oven. You're going to cook it in the oven for about 20 to 30 minutes with the lid on. And um, that is going to cook the rice lovely during that time. And then for five to 10 minutes near the end of cooking, I do actually take it out of the oven. I take the lid off, just checking the rice is doing well. And then I um, cook it with the lid off just for a little while. If you think the rice is drying out, add a little bit of hot water at this stage. Um, but yeah, I always cook it with the lid off near the end of cooking just so the chicken browns a bit more and adding a bit of olive oil at the top always helps. And there you go, that's the final product. And um, let me tell you, it's definitely a winner.
An easy, simple leftover recipe, which I love to make is mushroom tagliatelle or mushroom spaghetti. We often only have spaghetti left in the cupboard, so it's normally with spaghetti, but it does work very, very well with tagliatelle. Um, so this is definitely like a, oh, what have we got? Let's just throw some things together and make a delicious filling meal. What I love about this is it meets like many criterias. It's budget friendly, it's a weekday meal. It's like a quick weekday meal plus a, a kind of posh, like have your friends around, impress them with a delicious pasta dish type meal. And um, it's using up leftovers at the end of the week. So we often have like things like double cream sitting in the fridge. And if the double cream's gone a bit sour, it's fine. It's sour cream, it's fine. Um, cheap bottle of wine. You can get a cheap bottle of wine if you want, or if you've got leftover white wine. Do people have leftover white wine? Um, it's using up mushrooms that need to eat, be eaten. You throw some onions in there. You can throw some peas from the freezer in there. Yeah, and just kind of throw in some herbs. So it's a really delicious, creamy, very like savory dish. It's vegetarian. I do add cheese to this, so you can add like um, parmesan, 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 parmigiano. Um, but often that's not vegetarian friendly. So um, strong cheddar works absolutely lovely with this dish. So we're gonna throw it together. It's such a quick, easy, delicious meal. I'm gonna throw it all together in this pot, in the Crisio pot. Um, I would use my big shallow dish, but that's actually being currently used for something else. So uh, we're just going to use this dish today. We're gonna throw some, do you know what? This is coriander, we need parsley. We're gonna throw some parsley on it, cut the mushrooms up. It's so easy and it's such a delicious throw together type meal. 30 minutes, start to finish, easily done. In fact, 20 minutes, start to finish, easily done. Um, and you really can be like a beginner cook and make this. So the first thing I'm going to do, slice up my mushroom, slice up my onion, and crush some garlic and get that frying nicely together. weird angle so sliced up mushrooms diced up onion and I just crushed lots of garlic because you want to make it very garlicky and um, so I'm going to chuck it in here now with a knob of butter so about a tea tablespoon of butter fry that for a while until it goes soft and then we're going to add our white wine I'm going to add a large mug of white wine boil it until it's half reduced and then you know the alcohol has definitely gone out of it if you um, don't drink alcohol if you have you can't cook with alcohol and um, you can get a non-alcoholic white wine or you can add chicken stock or vegetable stock and a little bit of apple cider vinegar so let's get it in here with our knob of butter and fry it down for a little while okay after the butter is melted you want to add in your mushrooms and let those fry for a couple of minutes on their own just so they soften and then add in your onion and garlic and your herbs i'm actually using dill and oregano today you can actually use um parsley on its own or you can use dill and oregano or you can just use oregano or you can use maybe mixed herbs will work to be honest and let that all fry together until nice and soft. As you can see, it really reduces um, the size. But now I'm going to add in the white wine. I add, as I say, like a large mug full of white wine and let that reduce till about half of um, what it is. Then, you know, the alcohol has cooked out and After this stage, let put it onto low to medium heat. You don't want it too hot when you're adding the cream, but you add in your cream bit by bit and just slowly stir through. This is honestly such a quick dinner. This will take you a couple of minutes. Just warm through basically. Once the cream has warmed through, I do add my frozen peas. Frozen peas really have minimal amount of cooking, so they're so easy to cook. Add in your frozen peas, warm that through for another couple of minutes. And once that's all completely stirred in together, it's looking so creamy, go in and add your cheese. And then you are ready to start adding your pasta. Your pasta will cook for a little bit in this sauce. 
I accidentally overcooked it a tiny bit, but you want to add your pasta into the sauce when it's still al dente. Um, I love that word, Lawrence taught me that word, and now I love to say it all the time. <laughs> um, but there I go, I'm adding in my pasta, cooking for another few minutes together, just so the pasta really soaks in that cheesy, creamy sauce. Oh, it's so good. It's such a delicious meal, and it's one that I do tend to cook for friends when I've got friends over, because it just, it's so much luxurious, more luxurious than what you think. Considering it has minimal ingredients, it's super budget friendly. It's a really delicious meal. So I really, really recommend making this one. Um, I'm not being funny, but this is one of the tastiest, easiest, budget-friendly meals you can possibly make. Don't do what I did, which was let it simmer just two minutes too long at the end. You want to cook your pasta al dente and then add it to the sauce, and the pasta cooks a little bit in the sauce. I've got a very needy toddler at the moment, and for two minutes I just totally forgot about the dish, but it's still extremely creamy. It's absolutely... Enjoy it with a cup glass of wine if you want. It's such a delicious meal, really easy and really delicious. So we're gonna eat this now. Um, I really hope you enjoyed all of the budget recipes this week. I feel like there were some goodies in this one and I tried to be really clear in how we make them. So enjoy, let me know if you make them. Go follow me on Instagram, make sure you subscribe down below and I'll see you again really, really soon. Bye.